Hi. Uh, this week I thought I'll do a session about documentaries because documentaries I feel are uh, the most underrated film medium which is there in our country. I feel because there is uh, it could be because there is not enough of uh, uh, places where you can exhibit documentaries. You know because documentary is something which. Uh, is very factual which is uh, very uh, uh, message driven so it doesn't come under entertainment for the common industry and so by uh, by that standard they don't allow it to flourish in uh, many channels uh, not the theaters and not even the uh, tv channels and now in the otts we have yet to make presence but i feel because of the ott presence i think there could be a lot more documentaries of india which could come into the ott platform which i think uh, i see a lot of youngsters interested in making documentaries but they don't know how to go about it so that is why i thought i will do a small discussion on this Uh, uh basically what is a documentary a documentary is something you're talking about which has happened and which enlightens you on certain things which are so diverse because you there's so many things happening in the country which you would like to know about it could have a message it could have a very good impact on lot of people to know such a thing is happening and then that you would also take it forward or it could be about an incident which happened or it's about a suck uh success story of a common man like that anything can be about document people do watch a lot of uh, documentaries in national geography and uh, discovery channels and stuff like that because it's about it's uh, about animals and stuff like that there are so many documentaries even now being made in india which do not have a channel i i hope with this advent of all these new platforms on ott i hope that we find the channel for uh, the documentaries in this regard i thought i would uh, ask some questions to mr ramani who's a, uh, a pioneer in documentary film making from chennai and he's been done quite a bit of documentaries and i think this whole exercise uh will enlighten the uh hopefuls who want to make documentaries in the future you can see now how do you conceptualize the documentary you set out to make after you have chosen or been given the subject there is no set pattern uh, it's very specific to each documentary that i have made uh, most of the films that i have made uh, are very personal in the sense uh that the, the need to make the film is largely driven by my interest or to discover a film you know often uh, i sense a film when i when i'm in a situation and to give a form to that and to find out what the film is is what the whole process is for me uh, so most of the films are like to discover a film and sensing that there is a film so there is no definite uh, and each subject each topic has created different kind of uh, you know approaches and methodologies uh, some films have made in a very short period of time some even just on a day and a few hours a few minutes uh, some films are taking so long that you know it's like for many years one is working on it and you don't feel that you have reached a completion of the shooting so things are like that and uh, it's quite a range of uh, durations and you know approaches that i've been uh, uh, working on um, but when you get a commission documentary or say somebody approaches you i think uh, recognizing the fact that i make films that are very you know impressionistic very subjective lot of candid moments so when people recognize that kind of approach and like my other films that i made on my own uh, some by some other people have some organizations have they have supported me also in some of the projects 
and those things also have been like that only like they support an independent effort and achieving a film uh, as per as per my choice do you form the structure of the documentary after you shoot or even before you start the shoot over the years how do you think documentary structure has evolved you know there are uh, i mean again i would say each film is different uh, there are some films which i can sense the whole structure right at the beginning itself uh but 99% of the film 99 i mean 99% of the films that i've done uh i don't know the structure uh but what i do is i you know i just i just sense a film you know in the sense that i i call it a word i call it shruti or a, a sur or a tune or something like that where you know just like a musician would do uh i get a experience of a shruti or an attitude or a perspective um, or an approach or something that i deeply connect to something and the character or it could be a situation or event or you know, a moment or something like that so that that kind of gives a certain kind of vibration for me and that i hold on you know that i hold on very strongly and so i so i developed around that and it's almost like a you know a magnetic file Uh, around which start, things starts moving, and then you also realize that it it leads you to uh, pos- many possibilities of sequencing and other characters and other kinds of narratives, which may be different from what you thought earlier, but it can lead you on, and uh, almost like entering a wild forest and then discovering a way to move around. So it is uh, that is the most exciting part, and. Uh, so so there is most of the time it is like that and you you just is a journey to discover a film and in my case uh, i have been largely working with idea of experience and i kind of uh, and if the experience is uh, strong enough uh, i would say the information contained is also good enough uh, see the documentary film making movement uh, in india or in the world i would say has been largely during the world war 2 period that has started where people wanted to record and capture and then you know use it as a propaganda material and uh, to to support their own view points mostly it was with the government who because because of the money involved and the material involved the, the whole process was very much with the government only they could afford that kind of a money and and it continued till around uh, uh 1960s or 70s also you know till the time it is still very much in the control of the government but around the 70s i think it started moving towards uh, independent approaches and so the viewpoint becomes different so it is not a government uh, presenting their viewpoint but a viewpoint from a different angle say an opposition's point of view or a, or a human humanitarian point of view when which was that's how it started and even there uh, most of them were driven by voice overs narratives and interview based uh, narratives so you build up an argument based on interviews and the kind of people you talk to and uh, so that's how it's been like that and it continues actually even today but now the a lot of experiential films are coming a lot of experiments are coming in in terms of form and film making the documentary film making is not just either either it speak about government or speak against the government or speak against policies but it is also that it is an independent uh, genre in itself like like say fiction film making uh, it has huge potential in terms of exploring uh, so it is just another form of film making and film narrative what are the most important things a director should be looking for and be aware of before setting out to do a documentary so the, what the director uh, it's what is important is that uh, in from through my own experience i would say that the sense of connect or an anticipation is most most important for the director if you don't have the connect you cannot make the film uh, something you should be able to connect to and that's where uh, that's your hook hook or that's your you know uh, foot foot hold i would say you know like when you do rock climbing you know uh, i do i used to do a lot of those kind of things earlier uh, like when you want to climb a surface you have to look for the first point where you can put your hand or a grip or something like that when then you find the leg positions for that and 
that's how you move you know it's almost like you have to find a peg point and similarly in filmmaking also you have to sense uh, connect a sense of an image or sense of a narrative say and if you if you sense it then you get into it and that will lead you to more possibilities so it's it's opens up you know but you have to enter to enter you have to have a sense of connect and you have to try something out and then that's how you move so i would say a sense of connect is important and uh, attitude is important very very strongly and if you have a crew around around with you how the crew functions in a certain kind of unison or of because you are uh, all the time dealing with real situations you know unlike fiction films where everything can be controlled everything is decided or you know can be defined uh, in a documentary situation it is largely directing oneself directing your crew and 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 also being in complete responsive to the characters you're filming and to the space also so yeah that that sensitivity is very important uh for a documentary filmmaker and it is it is a very exciting medium to discover on the process what what can come out can a documentary have a narrative akin to a film fabric does it need a climax the narrative in a documentary filmmaking in comparison to film say when you say film fabric or when you say fiction film fabric uh, is basically this that there is a constant agreement factor that comes in uh, which is we just be constantly renewed you know it is not like for example if somebody agrees to that you can film if in my room in my house it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the person has accepted given you the first level of permission and then you go and then you want to film the person in the kitchen you know doing something and that is a private space so that person may not be thinking that this is allowed this is I didn't, this i was not comfortable with so so you have to get into the next next level of agreement which is that can i be can i film you doing something in the kitchen or in the bedroom or you know so it is you have to keep progressing in your agreements constantly sometimes it can it can be blocked you can say okay you can sit in this chair and you cannot walk around the house at all so those kind of things can also happen you have to respect it and then you have to move around with uh, move along so but this but you have to you have to keep striving for more access and more comfort zones um, you know those kind of things you have to constantly strive for and so that is the difference in terms of the narrative akin to the fiction films where in fiction films everything is in contract and so there also there are limits in terms of within the contract you can do certain things um in terms of climax what i would say is climax is a terminology uh, which is uh, largely largely understood i would say as that you know largely maybe because we have seen so many feature films where it ends in a climax of a fight scene or a resolution of a of a narrative like in my films most of the time the resolution or a uh, or a kind of a um, you know dramatic end or something like that doesn't doesn't happen it's sometimes it becomes very small and then kind of ends in a very small level and uh, so i don't look for those kind of solving everything at the end of the film nothing like that in fact i believe in this call quality that you know the film should move on even outside the parameters of the film duration it should it should hit it should uh, move into your lifestyle or into your into your self reflection mode a, a person who sees the film should should be able to reflect on it you know for a long period of time meaning it stays in your mind as some reference point to to drive your own life so i see it like that and so it is not something that i go for as a climax regarding the editing of documentaries uh whenever i got a chance to do i have done a few documentaries over the years i uh, coming from a feature film world always look at uh, telling a story because it's the most difficult thing i feel to edit a documentary because probably most of the cases doesn't have a structure in in the mind when they shoot a documentary because so many things you don't know what the character is going to be talk about if it's about if it's about a person who's speaking or you know so lots of 
things come up and you have to create a structure so it's totally created in the edit table to make it very interesting so when i am editing something like that for me i apply something from the films in this you know to get a story you know a story that moves uh gradually up and uh, finishes on a cli- climatic moment you know that that's the sort of impression it may not work for all the documentaries but that's how i look at it i try to hold information as it goes on because i want to keep the interest of the audience till the end of the documentary and not uh, uh lose it in the middle itself you know so uh, that sort of is my attitude to doc- documentary editing you know the exposure of documentaries has grown exponentially with the advent of ott platforms Do you think this will pave way for the documentary discipline to become more mainstream in terms of budgeting and eventually more eyeballs? See these OTT platforms are tempting, you know, it is because your your medium is showcased to a large people and people can access it in a very small amount. <clears throat> But it uh, OTT platforms are also become becoming like a huge giant, you know, in the sense that uh, just like you know how uh, what i would say um corporates work uh, they take over and they expand they expand they expand they expand and today you know netflix and amazon are the two only uh, ott platforms which people recognize there are other platforms that's coming up uh, small levels and all that uh, it will grow i think um, but it is always this challenge this thing that you know it it has to grow bigger and bigger acquire and acquire content acquire content so the content becomes their right as long as they acquire it and they keep it so it is only they can you know use it and it's a huge uh, acquisition uh, process of good content so in other words ott platforms define what is a good content just like you know cinema theaters and you know everything television everything defines what is good content so that is the problem that i feel is is a problematic you know you have to cater to what is called a good content and that that could be a problem big problem i mean at least for me um my films defy not so consciously maybe consciously also uh, because the, the kind of experiments i do in my work they defy any kind of consumption of any of these parameters of you know what this ott platforms decide or uh, even even if uh, somebody says that we are looking for experimental works even there it gets defined also and uh, so so one is constantly fighting at one level against this at the same time you are also attracted to these kind of platforms to to monetize your work um at the same time the democracy of monetization is also getting controlled by these ott platforms so yeah but uh in terms of budgeting whether document become more mainstream budgeting mainstream yes it can become like a, a documentary series they're all mainstreams uh commissioned by you know ott platforms they're completely mainstreams and uh, there's a huge funding happening anyway for documentary film like only indian filmmakers like me and many other filmmakers in india uh, are not in that league of uh, getting big funding i have also tried but i have not got it um but there is big level of funding uh, in foreign currencies uh, for documentaries which are you know based on your own stories uh, but which should be universal in in its approach which should fit their audience and then your audience if you want to many film festivals are opening up to documentaries and fiction film in the same screening space so there is no differentiation like for mami for example mumbai film festival it's so beautiful that you know this is something that i have been aspiring for for so many years that documentary and feature film should be treated on par and uh, that is now happening i mean not only in mummy but in many other places where uh, any genre of filmmaking i mean the genre of filmmaking is is irrelevant in the sense that that's the way a filmmaker has chosen to do something but it is it is a narrative in film grammar and uh, and it should be treated on par with anything else any other narratives so that's how it's going on i think uh, with all these answers uh, that uh, guess are given i think many of the doubts and 
uh, the insecurities a documentary filmmaker would face when making a documentary, how to create a structure, would have been uh, sort of uh, clarified in this. And I think it would make a difference to them when they start making documentaries in the future.